making mundane things more like, can I grocery shop in this amount of time? Let's see if anyone says like, oh, that's not possible or, oh, that's too hard. And there's just a little part of my brain that wants to know if it is. The last adventure was a 33 hour uh, run, so 138 miles. Like, no doctor is ever going to be like, yeah, I think that's a great idea, go run 100 miles. I rode my bike across America on a hand bike because I had a broken pelvis. <laughs> I don't know if like people who may be labeled as radical think of themselves as such. I am Katie Spots and I am an endurance athlete. I channel um, my passion for endurance to help people get clean water to drink. Definitely, yeah, didn't decide to be an endurance athlete. I would say that my journey to doing endurance sports was more or less an accident. Um, I was taking college courses in my high school years, and basically I had enough credits to get an associate's, um, but I didn't have uh, a gym class to get my high school diploma. So I picked a running walking class because I was like, well, I'm just going for this easy A, and I know that, yeah, walking would have been the easiest way to do that. And it was through that class that I was forced to be there three days a week. And after a week or two, I was like, I, I guess I'll try to run. I thought running meant like sprinting as fast as you can just to get it over with kind of thing. So the, the first mile I ran, it was not pretty. I didn't know how to pace myself and it was pretty um, miserable, like just like, yeah. But I was really excited because I did something I never thought I could. I never thought I, I could run a mile. And so that one mile was, or, was something that I continued to, okay, maybe I could go a little bit further. So one mile turned into two, two into three, and that's really where that journey began, just one, one mile. So my last endurance challenge was run for water, and it was um, a nonstop run, which meant I didn't sleep, I didn't other than changing outfits a few times and um, at night putting on a few extra layers, it was a continuous um, run, uh, yeah. And so uh, I started 6 a.m. on a Saturday morning for, and then finished around, um, yeah, a little bit after lunchtime on Sunday. I mean, I've had people who are like, who's telling you to do that? Like, who's making you do that? And um, I really enjoy, it's just kind of like that kid-like wonder of being like, can I climb that? Can I cross that? Can I, um, and yeah, so a lot of my adventures weren't going on a website and registering. It was just being like, yeah, kind of curious to see if that's possible. So like swimming the Allegheny River, that was an adventure that, um, it was a 325 mile swim, swimming the entire river, um, running across the Mojave and Colorado desert. We're also like just kind of exploring and, and um, yeah, w yeah. Um, so out of all the different endurance challenges, there are some that have been organized, like the Ironman races and a few of the 100 mile runs that I've done. But the ones that kind of feed and fuel me the most are the ones that are just kind of like, let's look at a map. Let's, yeah, let's see what we can swim or bike or um, run across. And so, uh, yeah. I, mo most of the bigger challenges are just, yeah, like rowing the Atlantic. It, some of the telltale like signs for me is if it's an idea that I'm really trying to ignore, it's usually the very thing that I really need to do. Like if it scares me, if it intimidates me, if it... So I don't have... I'm, I'm, I've never been the like bucket list and hear all the things because truthfully if it happens the way it has very organically it's better 
than anything that I would have written down on a, on a piece of paper. One of the biggest things that endurance has shown me is that we do have so much potential that's unexplored and untapped. If I was to take one piece out of what I do and say this is, it would be like just the physical limits that like, yeah, like, there's the limit, and you're just riding it, and it could be dangerous, and I, yeah, I think because of practice, I've been better at, like, really monitoring my body, but, like, no doctor is ever going to be like, yeah, I think that's a great idea, go run 100 miles, like, this isn't healthy, um, and I know that it is putting a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of pressure and stress on my body. Um, so yeah, even this last one, I um, had something called like rhabdo, where it's just where your muscles um, are breaking down and it's hard for your body to flush out all the toxins that are being released in the, in the bloodstream. But um, yeah, but I do what I can to help. And I, I, I think 138 was my limit. I think it's been reached. Um, I don't think I want to run any further on road. Um, maybe longer on trail, but I think that that's, that's, uh, yeah, I was, it was very difficult those last like three, four, five miles. I guess like, uh, from like what I understand of the, the word radical, it just means like going against the norm or doing something bold or, um, yeah, that w those would be kind of like where that fits in my brain. I don't know if like people who may be labeled as radical think of themselves as such. Um, and I was thinking, well, who is radical and who would actually be, who would say, yes, I am radical. <laughs> and I couldn't, I couldn't think of it. I'm like, is Lady Gaga radical? Because she like, you know, like, who, like, do you know anyone who'd be like, yes, I am radical? Like, to me, what would feel radical is to ignore a calling that you have, like to deny um, something that that's true to you. So I don't think of myself as radical. I think of the water crisis as being like a radical problem, like um, it's a problem with solutions and yet we still have it. So. Uh, yeah, I, I would say that the endurance challenges are no more radical than the problem that they're trying to alleviate. I didn't really know much about the water crisis until I was living on the other side of the globe. So I was um, studying in Australia and I was studying environmental science and one of my professors mentioned that the wars of the future would be on water and in some in, in some countries it's already the case and that was the one little nugget that was dropped and I, I just had to find out more and when I did do my homework and I did do that research to find out more about the water crisis I just felt like kind of embarrassed and ashamed in that moment because it was like here I am a 20 something and I'm not aware of what one in six people are dealing with every single day and their whole life is around this one issue and then I was thinking about like you know it was it, it definitely had a journey from from that moment to anger to confusion to like I was frustrated I was confused I, I just felt like wow we can do so much better than this and then there was hope um, when I started to see what was being done and how it was being done and um, I think there's a lot of problems that are really hard to wrap your head around because you know, th there, there aren't these clear cut solutions. And of course, with water, there are some complexities, but there's also a lot of effective solutions. And 
um, cost-effective ones. And so um, once I found out that there were people and organizations doing something about it, it, it was very natural for me to want to do something. And as someone who I would say that I can be kind of heady and logical, and if, if you want to solve a problem, like half of the hospi hospital beds are filled because of unsafe water. So instead of not saying that any cause is, um, you know, not worthy of support, but what I do love seeing with water is it, it goes to ground level. So it goes to the first step out of poverty. So it helps with environment. It helps with school. It helps with women empowerment. So like kids, when I was in Kenya, wouldn't be in school because they were collecting water. It was their job to. So when their schools could have water, when they their communities can have water, that gives these kids an opportunity to go to school and get an education. And so there's once I learn more about how water really is everything and touches all aspects of, of life, um, it made me, yeah, like, okay, of course we got to help, help and do something here. Why do radical things? It's like, why not? I mean, we have this one life and no, like, tomorrow is not promised to us. So I just think that every day is an opportunity to live life to the fullest. And, um, yeah, I think it usually people regret the things that they, they, they haven't done, they didn't do. And so I, yeah, I, I think the alternative is regret. The alternative is unfulfilled potential. The alternative is that lingering feeling of what if, that all, the alternative is looking at other people and saying, wow, I wish I could, or the alternative is looking at other people and saying, wow, that's so crazy, because that feels like the only thing you can do to feel better about not living a radical or bold or different life. And so, um, yeah, I think this is almost eh, like awkward to, to, be put in this lens because I, do, I feel like I'm doing what's um, intuitive and instinctual for me. Um, and it, it, of course, comes with like the reaction of others, whether that's how many times that I've heard like, oh my gosh, that's so crazy. Oh my gosh, that's so crazy. But even the row, like the row, um, I had two options, which was I was either going to row across the Atlantic or I would spend the rest of my life wondering why I didn't. And if you look at that from a logical standpoint, I think that the most logical thing would be to do it rather than spend years just sitting in regret. So it doesn't sound so radical. The most radical thing you could do is nothing.